we get rid of that blue t-shirt? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Just listen for a second. <laughs> What is up you beautiful farmers, it's your boy Carl. Welcome back to the channel. So, something different this week. I am in Cornwall. So yeah, not lamb and sheep and burn rib and Ben Mulden anymore. Dad and Joanne are looking after them at home for this weekend. So basically, me and three other boys locally are over at a shearing course this weekend. We're over with Matt Luxton and Matt Smith. Um, for a shear performance seminar over two days. It's a, just a Saturday and a Sunday. We come over here, we got here late last night. Very excited, um, keen to see around this farm too. It's a 300 acre farm. Matt has uh, sheep himself. He's about 1100 Romneys and he's got deer as well. Got a couple of things going on. I want to do a vlog, but I also want to learn and soak as much information out the weekends as I can just over with shearing, with fitness, with nutrition, because these are some of the best in our industry. Stuart, um, Connor is here as well. He broke a nine hour lamb record. Matt Smith is here. So they are two of the best shearers in the world. And then Matt Luxton, their trainer is here as well. And I'm very lucky to know uh, the three boys personally. They're all, I had did podcast episodes with all three of them. You can check them out on Spotify. I'll leave a link below. But um, yeah, we're gonna crack into it and I'll see how we get on. So from a recovery point of view, this is ADDK, really good, okay? Right, they're all the fat soluble vitamins, right? So, we'll put those in there. Vitamin C sources, yeah? So you've got red peppers, oranges, strawberries, broccoli, lemons. The only ones I didn't put on there, sweet potato and kiwis. Okay, really, really good source of vitamin C. All right? Cool, right, hydration. Yeah, so I'm gonna run through some bits and pieces of hydration. So electrolytes, um, what are they valuable? Well, we've discussed them a little bit already today. So some of the stuff I'll, you know, I'll skip through, but we've talked about how water alone may not be the answer to your hydration. Right. And I just have a plain gate from in there and a divide gate. I'll feed 10 the far side. You have a 10 by 15 foot plane. Well, just say I'll feed 10 sheep. How, how long are my sheep in Finland? Oh, it's a tank. Right, just, just say 10 sheep, right? Oh, he's just right, just listen for a second. Just, just listen for a <laughs> second. <laughs> 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 So we just finished the nutrition um, part of the seminar. We're going back in at 15 minutes and it was awesome. thought it was really good. A really underrated part of shearing. When you're a shearer, you think that shearing is the main part of it. And then it's just about the technique and how you do it. And then you just go as hard as you can. Like the thing about Matt and Matt Luxton and Matt Smith and Stuart and everyone else who's done records, now though it's come on so much because they look at so many other facets of shearing and they say technique is only one part of it no one's saying that it's go you're going to make shearing automatically easy but if you can make that a little bit easier that you can get more out of yourself that you can do a few more sheep per day or if you can do it a bit easier or if you can just wake up that little bit more energetic the next day and it, it, it applies as a shearer but as a farmer too because like it's a tough job we do you're under pressure as a farmer plenty and one particular period where you're under probably where you're under the most pressure in the year as a sheep farmer anyway and as a cattle farmer is lambing and calving that's when you're under pressure because you're working hard it's constant it's very intense you just have constant work in front of you you have low sleep you're just running around oh, there's other stressors too because other stuff gets put on the back foot a bit and then stuff starts to get on top of you a little bit and it's a tough mentally physically it's a tough time but yeah that was real that was an eye-opener like when you see what they've achieved you think it's it's crazy it's just so unattainable and you know it is it's absolutely mental it's the very pinnacle of shearing as a sport as a job as a profession but at the same time when you see 
all, it's the attention to detail that's what really um, surprises you when you go and do a course and you see what's behind the results that Matt Smith, Matt Luxton, Stewart and all these other people got. Like the attention to detail on so many different things, sleep, nutrition. And that's not all, because it's not all just crazy rah rah hard work. It's kind of just more just, just thinking about it and just doing these little tweaks. And it's a slow progress and you just, it's a slow thing. It doesn't happen overnight, like, but you just kind of maybe apply a couple of things at a time. And then if you keep at it, like in a couple of years, you could be just a completely different farmer, shearer. Yeah, no, so that's just the morning session. I found that absolutely fantastic already. So, yeah. On to the next one. Because of what it is. shearing a head. Now there's nothing wrong with them, but it's understanding why they do what they do and why they show what they show. If you shear this side and only this side, which is promoted in some teaching, which is completely fine if you're shearing open-headed merinos or open-headed crossbreds. If you start doing that on woolly-headed sheep, Romneys and Bursa things, you're gonna come unstuck for your last side. <laughs> So it's probably a bit loud, but at the moment we're doing the cheering course section of it. So in the morning we did nutrition and nutrition and lifestyle was there. It was basically hydration, sleep, nutrition, all that sort of stuff. Now we're doing the actual shearing element of it. And Matt, Smith and Stuart are looking at us shearing and then they're going to give us feedback and they're going to do a tutorial. And then we're going to go ahead and shear some more and hopefully be better the next time round. So I suppose it's just about soaking up as much information as you can. This is the woman that makes this whole operation tick. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Pippa. How do you find it? 
good. Yeah. I think it's going really well. I think everybody, I think everybody's going to get a lot out of it because they have got three really good four, including Stuart, like really good people that will help them. Really good people, the best in the world. Like. For people who don't know farming, for because I have a good farming audience and wouldn't know much about cheering, like we've got two world record holders, like, so that's a huge deal. Man, yeah. so it's the best of the best. Yeah, it's massive. And um, the other night, Matt and Simon done a course together, like an open evening. And um, there was a guy there, probably about 55, 60. Yeah. And um, he rang me up the following day and was like, wow. He's like, what I uh, learned that evening was more than I've learned my whole shearing career. He yeah. said, like, it's awesome. He's got to keep teaching. So mm. That's not bad. Nice. Well, yeah. you're getting feedback like that. It's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's really like, nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Matt Luxon told me a couple of times, Matt. Luxon is Matt's trainer. Yeah. Matt and Matt does the two Matt's, but he said Matt was one of the fittest athletes I trained. Like when he came in at that record of a savage. He's very so passionate. When, when Matt gets like stuck in something, he's really, really passionate. Yeah. And he knows so much about records. You know, like he knows what it takes to be able to do it. Like not only from his personal experiences, you know, he's, he's always had a passion for records. Yeah. And like watching people, and you know, he's got huge admiration for Darren Ford and all these shearers, Rodney Sutton. And, you know, like he just had the greatest respect for people like that, mm. and the only way you're going to get better is by watching these people and getting in amongst it and yeah, trying to get yeah. yourself. And then not being afraid to compete yeah. with them when it comes yeah, to when you get up that level, too, yeah. <laughs> you might be on YouTube, yeah? Okay, you're flying a Claire. Oh. <laughs> Good to see Sly go out before. Fuck, he's nearly taking another face off. It's to be like cheek and straight to shoulder. Yeah, and I'm really open cheek. I mean, shit, me, you could be three rows, mm. two less rows on really open cheek. Really? You know, if you weren't so shit and stuff, and you very much. But that left is quite... And in fact, we can move right back a little bit. I'm in here. You don't have to go into that. You know, it's... Yeah. Really getting a lot of the chest and... Yeah, I mean, look, you can go too deep, it's pointless. Yeah. Then you end up being in the wrong place. Around here, so you, you know, you just got to get that measure. 
But yeah, I mean, Johnny hits that right all the time. Yeah. You watch him film that last show, it's just It's far too fluid when he does it like that. Mm. It's absolutely horrible for a while. There's oil or grease underneath there. It will create a hydraulic effect. The um, pin is easy to undo if someone grab that for me you can get underneath this little lip there try not to get underneath that spring the fork stop screw the most important thing when you're putting the fork stop screw back on is to make sure you put it on by hand it's really easy to miss thread and um, it's a bit of a bugger to try and fix so fork stop screw cap um, the ball, make sure that the ball can run freely up and down inside the race and you can check your race to see if it's excessively worn or if that ball is running around on there. You don't need to tighten this up because the down tube will do that for you. Putting the ball back on, what you would do, and I'll try to do it without it, is flat to the back, you put a bit of grease on your finger and then that ball will go up and straight on. Putting grease on the finger just makes it stick. The chicken feet come out turning from the side and you just want to make sure that they are not too loose. Um, I won't take the post and cup out um, just because we haven't got time but I just drift that out this way, drift that out that way, put it back in with the copper hammer. We want to make sure that that's flush when you put it back in and flush here. With our hand piece the tolerances are so fine I can belt that in and it'll still be sitting there nice and close on that lip on both. So flush here, flush there. I usually grease them when I'm putting them back together. Remember the fork stop screw, we had to put that in by hand, start that off by hand. Grease in the actual cup or? I put or grease in the cup, right. just after. It, 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 it's, it's just lubrication. I mean, if you, you were shearing in sandy or pumice, you wouldn't do that because it'll turn it into a grinding paste. Remember we talked about the pin and a new pin and measuring it? Mm. If you could see a visual difference, I would change the front Since end of that hand grinding piece. Paste, no, like grease and pumice, they could just be... Yeah. It's just grinding paste, yeah. yeah. So you just want to use oil, so you wouldn't use grease then, yeah. Mm. But grease is an excellent lubricant. If you're not, if you're not in those environments, the post, the post and, and cup, they've got to move back across each other. And the smoother that they can do that, the better, more flow that you're going to yeah. get out of the hand piece. And, and that's why we put this uh, oil hole here. Always while that hand piece is untensioned, put a few drops of oil there into the cup. Do it every cup of change. You'll find a major difference. Hand pieces we get back for repair. Similarly, you put grease in there or you put oil in there for sure and you pass the pumice. Um, you want to make sure that that's rotating because that should rotate um, and move freely up and down. Um, Uh, yep, uh, tension up, we talked about no oil being up in there. And I haven't showed you how to set, uh, set the centre post. The key with the centre post is don't move it. Um, that's why we've got a little red dot on there so that we can see if we've moved it or not. Um, they are set to a three mil cutter, that's the, you just don't need to move them. Um, what I was saying before is that I can always tell when they the centre post hasn't been oiled, when they come back they are black, they're burnt and I can see uh, score marks onto the back, on the back of the post. Of course, yeah. And I just know that shear is just getting a ratty cut. Yeah. I just know that that's happening. He got used to it, she got used to it, mm. but it's, it's it, it, just with a bit of oil on there regular, you will notice a big yeah. difference. Into that wee hole. Into that wee hole. So yeah, so guys that's Apart from setting the centre post and taking the top and the bottom cup out, that's stripping a hand piece down and putting it back together again. There's two choices.
So I'm here with Simon, who is the UK Heineken rep. Yeah, yeah I don't be your title or manager. No, managing director. Managing director, it, it yeah. Is, well, right. thinking of your, it's a pretty flat yeah. system we're all on. We've <laughs> got a bit of wool on me, so it's no, I'm not, there's no shiny suits here. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Meet, meet us where we're at, like. But um, yeah, Rajiv just came to chat us for a couple of minutes. We're in the middle of a, well, we're finished the course now. It was a good two day course and it was pretty hectic, wasn't it? Involved a lot. Like. A lot of information. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you obviously see a lot of uh, young shears and you see a lot of people's gear. Like, what do you think is the most common problem that you see? Like? Yeah, well, I, well I, shears I, of all levels, really. Obviously, anyone can make mistakes and have things wrong. Yeah, but I mean, as your as your shearing career progresses, you sort of trade out of the those issues that you've you, you start with. And one of the issues is just gear, just mm. buying decent gear. Yeah, we had an example today where you know a young fella had a handpiece rebuilt, and it's I looked at the handpiece, turned it over, it's an icon. And when I start taking it so apart, there's going, Chinese yeah. parts all through it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah so. Yeah. Yeah. You know that that just and and we could hear the handpiece chattering. Yeah, on the that board. wasn't going right at all. Like, was it? And so we speak to the shearer. Yeah, yeah, it heats up after about four sheep, and and you can hear it chattering. Yeah. So you know, I, I take those parts out, put uh, the genuine parts back in, and the difference is just chalk and cheese. Mm. Even the tension. I mean, when I put the tension down on that handpiece when it was when I took it off the shearer. It just went to a point and wouldn't go any further. Yeah. Put our parts in it, and it's nice and spongy. The tension goes down nice and smooth. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I mean, there's no feel of tension. It's mm. rattling. It's and, and so you know, you, we were talking. Uh, Matt Luxton would have been speaking to you guys. I mean, your bodies the, are machines. The most important uh, thing, and you know, yeah. you can't replace yeah. those. Parts. Takes some amount more energy to push gear yeah. that isn't going like absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so it would sure. be for me. It would be. You know, buy decent, you know, buy five good yeah. combs, you know. Especially if you're a full-time shearer, like. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. definitely. So you're going to make that money back with the extra performance. And a couple, of, couple of extra sheep a day over the whole course of a season or a year, like, or... The, exactly, you know. and I mean, you're feeling better. And there's there's all these variables in shearing. There's the sheep, the weather, the, the way the farmer's preventing the sheep, you, how you woke up in the morning. And then, so we as a manufacturer, we, we're aware of that. What we're trying to do is at least give you one bit of consistency mm. so that the combs are always consistent, the handpiece are consistent, um, so that we're taking a variable out of it. So at least you can rely, you wake up in the morning and go shearing tomorrow, yeah. the comb's not going to change. Everything else might, yeah, but yeah, at yeah. least... You have a pack of combs, the five of them are going to be the exact exactly. same. Exactly. Like, like, so Simon was showing us a bit about the engineer, engineering of them yesterday and how like the tiniest little differences Absolutely. in like the radius of the tip and yep. how and like so that has to be absolutely bevel thickness yeah. tip radius um and and the shape of the tip the size of yeah. the size of the bevel um you know it's, uh, it's some combs will have a drop tip where you know it'll look right the, the the bevel's coming up nicely and then this tip as it goes on it's dropped so you know, and, and out the packet that might go okay, but then when you start getting off the scallop, or you know, you've got a mill of scallop, starts to get a bit thinner. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and then mm -hmm. that's when you want that comb. You're expecting that comb to go, yeah. and you're getting hooked up. And it's and getting you don't worse. Know why, it's getting worse it's when getting it should worse. be getting better. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the shears, we like thin gear makes a. When it starts to get down, it should theoretically go better. Like, but absolutely. If yeah, if if it's starting to go worse, yeah, and that's a. Yeah, yeah or just not as point. expected is probably the other side. You know, this variable of expectation of the way the comb should perform through its life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it gets to a point and it's not per uh, performing the way it should mm. and then is it cheaper you know you've it, it's uh, 20 let's say it's, it's 10 or 20 percent cheaper and mm. but you're only able to use two-thirds of it that, that's not cheaper yeah, yeah. It comes down to investing in yourself because yes. sure like look at us all of us here like we come over from ireland and if some people were closer by but paid for flights accommodation the whole lot paid for the course but we're doing it in order to get better because when you get better like then that just you have that gain for the rest of your career then absolutely. like as well investing in yourself is such a good thing to do isn't it like, a so important yeah. definitely and trying to find some consistencies in an industry that there is just so oh. many inconsistencies yeah not very really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah but cheers for that thanks no not really yeah. go, go and have a wee look how many deer are you on? about a thousand right Thousand deer. Yeah. yeah. About eleven hundred sheep. Yeah, yeah, about eleven hundred. Well, I've had a thousand and sixty lambing I think this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was a bit of a bit of a draw with um you know, it was great bringing over those New Zealand Rams, but 
being that bit out of season, it did yeah. make it drag on a bit. And mm. I don't have not that. Do you cross anything in, or are they all Romneys? They're all Romneys. All Romneys. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And it's just trying to find that happy medium. You know, there's a lot of emphasis now on, you know, not using drugs um, because they're not working anymore. Mm. Yeah, mainly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're working very hard with a lot of interesting people on that, mm. which makes it enjoyable. Worm, worm resistance. Worm resistance. Stuff, yeah. uh, resilience more than resistance. Resilience. Yeah. A big difference. Yeah. Big difference. But they can carry a worm load. You were telling me about that. And they the just podcast. keep growing. Yeah. 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 And mm. learning now that the the chasing of the resistance is basically leading towards creating a super worm yeah because a resistant animal is trying to do the same thing as a wormer is yeah it's trying to kill the worm yeah you know, although it's using its antibodies but it's still allowing some worms to survive it still yeah. has a worm egg count so mm. it hasn't been successful at killing all those yeah, yeah the same way as a wormer hasn't been and now where that's led us to some farms being that far broken down oh, yeah. politics, it's crazy yeah, yeah. so I think if you're a resilient sheep that can just tolerate a tolerate worm it, group. it creates somewhat of the refuser effect as far as it repopulates the worm population that have never been exposed to anything trying to kill them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. then means that when we have a really bad spike, you know, which we can get like a really wet, horrible autumn, we can actually have salvation yeah, again. You can treat that, yeah. You know, yeah. Whereas if we're just using it as they've said every six weeks, it's, same, it's the same as Matt with the caffeine yesterday. Yeah. If you're using it the whole time, you don't have. You it. don't see a benefit. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, <laughs> when you really need it, then like, you know. yeah. But for yeah. me, you know, after travelling that, being able to work with those people has created a massive amount of just mental stimulation that is I need. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because otherwise you just to really you put fall, your effort yeah, and focus yeah. into farming now, like yeah, and mm -hmm. you fall in a rut, you sort of you come away after achieving goals you know for me obviously the goals were sharing based yep. and so forth and then you got a family which is another big goal mm. and then now it's like oh. so for people who don't know 2016 was the record yeah and then yeah you, you, a lot of people talk about that like like athletes and that there uh, when you get some big milestone yeah. you hear olympians on about yeah, it yeah. and it's that going to be a bit of a lull point plateau, after it's a bit of a plateau because mm. like you chase it for so long and it's like and yeah. things like what a world, next? Yeah, but things like a world record of shearing within reason, yes, there's other disciplines. You know, okay, if you're an athlete, you go for gold next year, or yeah, you, know, you get there's something that you can have a bit of a lull and go back again. When you yeah. when you're at a world record level, you've achieved that goal. Uh, you're not going to back up and do your own goal again. again. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, it's a bit of a I forget the words they use for it, but you definitely feel a little bit just lost. Mm. And I've always enjoyed the farming um, and the dog work. Enjoying the training now to a degree, not that I don't enjoy seeing people do well, yeah. it's just not my comfort zone. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I get a lot out of it, I enjoy, you know, like you see some people come in, You're and it could be it. just one little thing. Yeah. You know, like it could You're be good at it, mate. Doing, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just trying to put it in perspective, because we've all been there, you know, little, especially when it comes to you know agricultural college you know those that can do it and those that can't teach you yeah. know, and here we are it's like oh, shit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so last thing you've went and done it like so it's, it's nice that you're willing to give back and bring us on like and yeah, yeah. and it is enjoyable and it, you know like i was saying we were although it was a school of hard knocks there was a lot of good people to learn from yeah and absolutely. there is some great sharers around still oh, sure. but they're not as frequent oh, as common, they yeah, used yeah, to yeah. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's relative to the sheet numbers mm. you know they're dropping away and yeah so, yeah. With the Romneys, like what, what do you like about them? Because they're just sort of a farming audience, like to be, so you have 1100 so Romneys and you're obviously big into them, big believer in them. Like. Big believer in them. I mean, as much as it might frustrate people, I've seen a lot more sheep than people can comprehend. Mm. And I've seen them in their natural, raw self. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. It's not on show day. It's not on show day. day. <laughs> I'm not a vet turning up to the farm that gets to see the one one thing that's sick. I mm. share everything, mm. and you know, you go into the different breeds, and that's where that came from. Just that whole, we actually really need to do something about this because this is getting really bad. Now, yeah. You know? and like, just certain breeds, you know, going, oh, how do you find the feet? Oh, no worse than any other breed. It's like, how do you know that? Mm. You haven't seen anybody else. Yeah. How yeah. do you know that? Because I'm sort of the yeah. What's their adventures? What's their main adventures? They're, the they're pretty hardy, I think. They Go are pretty hardy. Yeah. 
again, it's like dog breeding, it's like show. There is some crap Romneys over mm. here, and unfortunately, they're marketed incredibly well. Yeah, that's the yeah, and it's across every breed. Yeah. it's not just Romneys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, some. Are, I'm a big believer in the male black race, but I'll show you some midland ones around, pure yeah, fine bone like, ones, and like, no no hardiness or no power in them at all. Like like a little wispy with the things like. There's good and bad sheep of every single yeah. breed, like, yeah, for sure. Oh, a hundred percent. And no, it's it's fun. There's a lot of things going on here. It's a, it's been a turbulent time with you know marketing deer into restaurants. It's, and I think one of the things that's been very, I find offensive as a farmer. Yeah. You know, competing with wild sheep. Just people who don't know. So there's, yeah, you, you have a West Country venison brand, West Country premium venison. Yeah. Is your brand? It's it, so it's a farm. So it's from farm yeah, farm with venison. With yeah. venison. Yeah. And it's great. You know, we're dealing... That's taking up a lot of your time at the moment, like, It's it? taking up a lot of time, you know, like... They've an, they an avatar here and all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we stand yeah. above it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so it's been very difficult from a farming perspective. You know, us as a UK and Ireland food producing, you know, region, we're very proud of what we do. Yeah. And as farmers, we are scrutinised in what we do. You know, mm. there's a lot of rules and regulations Absolutely. for us. Absolutely. So then when we see wild avenue, wild deer coming in to the food chain, that have been grazing ad lib wild crops sprayed. You know, they walk into the paddock after the spray is driven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Graze that. Yeah. Potentially. People would think a wild deer is organic. Yeah, free range. The reason why they're just they they're like hopping into fields, like. You yeah, know, they and travel, they'll again. travel 10 to 20 miles a night comfortably. Yeah. Comfortably. <laughs> so to sit there and you've got these people. So they're eating everything and anything. Eating right, right. everything and everything. And mm. why do they like things that are freshly sprayed? Because the sugars come up. Oh, yes, okay. So then it tastes like candy. Yeah by a son of out, Alps, oh, just and then he's just flown over from New Zealand about 19 months ago, and he's taken a little while to settle in. Sometimes don't change hands, man. We've got no. a sheep dog at home, six oh, yeah. weeks of time she even come here. Yeah. He's got a big dog too. Yeah, yeah. right there. Oh, face, 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 Big hey. Face hey. Face hey. Hey. Oh, quiet, quiet. You like me, baby. He's a woman's dog. He loves women. <sighs> She's got all this today. But they've hunted away trails in New Zealand. Yeah. Push them on the hill. Like. Yeah, push them up a hill like that. Stand there. So I'm here with the man that was a big part of making all the magic happen at the world records. <laughs> how many how many records have you trained? Oh, you trained over keeps going up. Every time over, I talk to you, there's a few more. <laughs> over over twenty, I think. Now, over yeah. twenty. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. For a man that doesn't cheer at all. No, I've never shot a sheep in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I've watched a few. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've watched a few. Okay. Stage, yeah. okay, Tell good. us a little bit of the story of you, how you and Matt met, oh, and how yeah. you ended up. Because it was just kind of, well, not accidentally, but it was just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Habit, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, like, I've known Pip. Um, Ten years ago, you probably didn't think you'd be training all the sheep shears, eh? Nah, yeah. nah, not at all. <laughs> I think if you told me that, I'd be like, wow, I don't know, yeah. I mean, I knew the front and back end, but I didn't know, I didn't know what goes on in between, so... <laughs> the um, same amount of legs as a horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they still want to die, right? Both, both animals. Um, Badly. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I guess... So Pip, I knew Pip from school really, um, and, and one day Pip said to me, she knew obviously I was doing fitness coaching, and, and she said to, she said to me, oh Matt, would you would you mind meeting my Matt? And uh, mm. at the time they weren't married, um, and, uh, and and would you mind having a look at a DVD because he wants to do um, a shearing record? And obviously I had no idea really. I was like, yeah yeah, come on over, we'll have a look because I'm yeah. I always like to listen and you know, mm. understand what what different people are doing. Yeah. So and then from there the the rest is history really. Mm. Yeah, yeah, watch that DVD and um, of shearing. Yeah yeah and, uh, yeah, and, yeah, of him shearing the mm. previous record. That he'd, he'd attempted and um, yeah. 
and yeah, then away we went. You don't need to be sure though, because you, you have your between two of you putting your heads together. Like obviously Matt, as good a sure as he is, and then you being as mm-hmm. known as much about physiology and training and nutrition as you do. Like just but you put the two of them together, and yeah, I think yeah. we I think we definitely work well together. Mm-hmm. Um, and Proof we've, the puddings and yeah, yeah, Proof yeah, the puddings. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we have over twenty world helped, record holders now in different records. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah. helped a lot of people now, which is great. And um, you know, right, not just world record as well. Like people who you know, people who want to share less pain, and people who are starting off their journey. You know, yeah. whether they be doing their first hundred, two hundred, whatever it might be. You know, we're mm. we're if anyone wants to improve, we're we're all ears because I think that's the sort of person that we want to help. Really, farming is physical too, and mm. there there is okay. a lot to be said about looking after your body. And I train a lot of farmers now. Yeah, a lot yeah. of farmers I'm working with. And I think what I'm noticing actually within them is that they are recognising that that in order for them to be better business people, better uh, physically around the farm, they mm. are noticing that they need to be. You know, and I've got even like some guys now we're coaching. We're coaching the farmer. We're coaching his farm workers as well. Yeah, um, and nice. I think that what they're they're identifying is a is a an area that they can get more out of. Yeah, you know, themselves and their staff again. That's better. fantastic, isn't it? Sorry? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, really that's good, really yeah. good, yeah. yeah and really then like there's you know, there's plenty of farmers for yourself even it's a yeah. good market, but yeah. but it's great to see farmers wanting to improve themselves. But it, but it's not just even physical, is it? Like it's mental too mm. in terms of your decision making and just being in a better mood and Absolutely. if you're getting better sleep and if everything, all those things are right, nutrition is right and yeah. that all goes in together. Like, yeah. Yeah. Everything you've mentioned and then with that, mm. the ability to manage stress mm. and I think that's one of the main things I've seen with the guys that we've coached is that, you know, is that they, they, can they take are better more at pressure. managing stress now yeah. because they have the ability, they micro every training goes through micro stress yeah. and so that they know how to get stress, recover, stress, recover. So then suddenly the, the stresses that come in their life are a lot more manageable. Yeah. And also the stress, the, the, the training is, if you like, is a stress or the better nutrition helps to reduce stress. Absolutely. So, yeah. Better um, sleep and having, yeah. having those things in. Yeah, yeah. so all of that helps. Mm. Like be and even just gone by while well, some people are still doing it, we're finishing up with like lambing and calving. So, that in particular for livestock farmers, that's an intense time. That's it, like you say, if, you sleep, if your sleep is deprived and you know you're going to go through a period of time where it is going to be, yeah. you best make sure your nutrition, and hydration, and, and other aspects of your lifestyle are on point because yeah. you know what we don't want is that stress overflowing and, yeah. and causing the breakdown or yeah. illness. Mm. What was the thing with the, the stress bucket? That was very good, wasn't it? Yeah, so it's, it's not it's not nothing that I made up, but mm. um, there was a guy called Seth Godin, I think, where I first heard of it, where basically he used this analogy of a stress bucket and you know the layers of stress build up can be environmental social you know work yeah. financial all these stresses you give really good examples you're like you could have had an argument with someone or fallen out with someone yeah. and that makes a difference like you feel that mm. stresses you mm. that nearly has a physical yeah. like you feel like you have a pit in your stomach well it does breath. because it was, was, was physically what happens at that point is you go into like fight and flight cortisol levels the stress hormone goes up yeah. so physically it's starting to affect you when your cortisol levels yeah. go up your, your affinity for sugar goes up your ability to store fat goes up and you don't sleep well so yeah. you know it, 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 an emotional trigger triggers physical responses mm. which then so then manifest like you, themselves uh, in different ways so the stress bucket you could have you could have that and then you could have maybe just like multiple bad meals or just yeah. not not so eating poor right. nutrition in there yeah layer it up and when you get to the top boom everything yeah. overflows so what we say to people is that you'll find ways of of either reducing the stress to start with i.e. eat better in that in that context yeah. or find ways keeping in with your family and friends a bit better yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then or you know find ways to put, put holes inside of the bucket to let the stress out yeah so you know like you say exercise might be one way having good relationships with friends and family making sure you stay in contact with them you know that kind of stuff mm. you know everyone will find their own way of doing it physically like what then say in terms of training nutrition and all that what what are other ways to put holes in it like it's supposed to just Sleep well, is sleep, like sleep, big thing. Sleep's that, huge, yeah, because sleep so is the biggest restorative thing we've got. Um, there's such a macho thing with, with there's, it's in shearing and it's in farming and it's the whole lot of, uh, the, you know, the, the less you're sleeping, the harder you are. Yeah, you're. sleep when you're dead kind of actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, like, you, yeah, I mean, you can't argue with the science at the end of the day. The science says that if you, if you don't sleep enough, you, 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 you know, you're going to suffer yeah. now and, like you say, shorten lifespan as well. So. Um, yeah, I mean, short and lifespan. Yeah, 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 hundred mm. um, percent. Yeah. But less quality of life. Less quality of yeah. life because obviously you're going to run around craving foods, doing things you, you know, yeah. with dist- you know, foggy mind. You put on weight when you're when you're sleep deprived. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. right. There's yeah. so many people don't even realise the amount of 
the amount of disadvantages there are like, yeah. to not get enough sleep. That's when you, if you sleep well, then you decide not to sleep well, or you because you, you or you can't because you work or whatever it might be, mm. and then you try and go and perform. That's when you notice the difference. Yeah. And then when you take it the other way, you go right. We're going to make sure we have a real good period of sleep here. We're going to set ourselves up for that. Then you'll notice how how well we feel. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Nice yeah, one. 100%. Good stuff. Oh, good. That was a bit Thanks of value. Thanks for coming. Though. Yeah, cheers. That was good. Good. Can we get rid of that blue t shirt? Oh. <laughs> 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 <That's> it? <laughs> Yep. Great. Thank you. Send me on. Send me on the shed one. Send me on the shed one.